The Seattle Post Intelligencer, popularly known as the Seattle PI, the Post Intelligencer, or simply the PI, is an online newspaper and former print newspaper based in Seattle, Washington, United States. The newspaper was founded in 1863 as the Weekly Seattle Gazette and was later published daily in broadsheet format. It was long one of the city's two daily newspapers, along with the Seattle Times, until it became an online-only publication on March 18, 2009. History J. R. Watson founded the P.I., Seattle's first newspaper, on December 10, 1863, as the Seattle Gazette. The paper failed after a few years and was renamed the Weekly Intelligencer in 1867 by the new owner, Sam Maxwell. In 1878, after publishing the Intelligencer as a morning daily, Thaddeus Hanford bought the Daily Intelligencer for $8,000. Hanford also acquired the Daily Puget Sound Dispatch and the Weekly Pacific Tribune and folded both papers into the Intelligencer. In 1881, the Intelligencer merged with the Seattle Post. The names were combined to form the present day name. In 1886, Indiana businessman Lee S. J. Hunt came to Seattle and purchased the Seattle Post Intelligencer, which he owned and published until he was forced to sell in the Panic of 1893. At this point, the newspaper was acquired by attorney and real estate developer James D. Hogg, under whom it was representative of an establishment viewpoint. It was the state's predominant newspaper. Circulation was greatly increased by coverage of the Klondike Gold Rush in 1897. Hogg who was involved in other business sought to find a buyer and sold in 1899. The newspaper was acquired with assistance from James J. Hill by John L. Wilson who had first started the Seattle Klondike Information Bureau. The newspaper was acquired by Hearst in 1921. Circulation stood at 31,000 in 1911. In 1912, editor Eric W. Allen left the paper to found the University of Oregon School of Journalism, which he ran until his death in 1944. William Randolph Hearst took over the paper in 1921, and the Hearst Corporation owns the PI to this day. In 1936, 35 PI writers and members of the Newspaper Guild went on three month strike again. Arbitrary dismissals and assignment changes and other efficiency moves by the newspaper. The International Brotherhood of Teamsters joined the strike in solidarity. Roger Simpson and William Ames co wrote their book Unionism or Hearst. The Seattle Post Intelligencer strike of 1936 on the topic. Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt had a special relationship with the PI. Also in 1936, their son in law Clarence John Botiger took over as publisher. He brought his wife Anna, the Roosevelt's daughter, to also work at the paper. Anna became editor of the Women's Page. Botiger left Seattle to enter the U.S. Army in April 1943, while Anna stayed at the paper to help keep a liberal voice in the running of the paper. After Botiger's absence, the paper increasingly turned conservative with Hearst's new acting publisher. Anna left Seattle in December 1943 to live in the White House with her youngest child, Johnny. 
This effectively ended the Roosevelt Botega ties with the PI. On December 15, 2006, no copies were printed as a result of a power outage caused by the December 2006 Pacific Northwest storms. It was the first time in 70 years that publication had been suspended. On January 9, 2009, the Hearst Corporation announced that after losing money on it every year since 2000, Hearst was putting the PI up for sale. The paper would be put on the market for 60 days, and if a buyer could not be found within that time, the paper would either be turned into an Internet-only publication with a drastically reduced staff, or closed outright. The news of the paper's impending sale was initially broken by local station King TV the night prior to the official announcement, and came as a surprise to the PI's staff and the owners of rival newspaper The Seattle Times. Analysts did not expect a buyer to be found, in view of declining circulation in the U.S. newspaper industry and other newspapers on the market going unsold. Five days before the 60-day deadline, the PI reported that the Hearst Corporation had given several PI reporters provisional job offers for an online edition of the PI. On March 16, 2009, the newspaper posted a headline on its front page, followed shortly after by a short news story that explained that the following day's edition would be its final one in print. The newspaper's publisher, Roger Oglesby, was quoted saying that the PI would continue as an online-only operation. Print subscribers had their subscriptions automatically transferred to the Seattle Times on March 18. As of 2018, the PI continues as an online-only newspaper. In September 2010, the site had an estimated 2.8 million unique visitors and 208,000 visitors per day. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Joint Operating Agreement. From 1983 to 2009, the PI and the Seattle Times had a joint operating agreement whereby advertising, production, marketing, and circulation were run for both papers by the Seattle Times Company. They maintained separate news and editorial departments. The papers published a combined Sunday edition, although The Times handled the majority of the editorial content while the PI only provided a small editorial, opinions section. In 2003 Times tried to cancel the JOA, citing a clause in it that three consecutive years of losses were cause for cancelling the agreement. Hearst disagreed and immediately filed suit to prevent the Times from cancelling the agreement. Hearst argued that a force majeure clause prevented the Times from claiming losses in 2000 and 2001 as reason to end the JOA, because they resulted from extraordinary events in this case, a seven-week newspaper strike. Each side publicly accused the other of attempting to put its rival out of business. The trial judge granted a summary judgment in Hearst's favor on the force majeure issue. But after two appeals, the Washington State Supreme Court ruled in favor of the Times on June 30, 2005, on the force majeure clause, reversing the trial court judge. The two papers settled the issue on April 16, 2007. The JOA ended in 2009 with the cessation of the PI print edition. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Awards. 
The PI was notable for its two-time Pulitzer Prize-winning editorial cartoonist, David Horsey. Report on Judge Gary Little Investigative reporting on King County Superior Court Judge Gary Little's out-of-court contact with juvenile defendants revealed accusations that Little molested young boys while he was a teacher at Seattle's exclusive Lakeside School between 1968 and 1971. It also revealed inappropriate contact between Little and juveniles appearing before him after he became a judge. On August 19, 1988, after reporter Duff Wilson called the judge to advise him the newspaper was publishing the story, Little shot himself in the King County Courthouse. The ethical debates surrounding the publication of the story, and the network of connections that protected Little, are taught in journalism classes, and led to reforms in the way judges are disciplined in Washington state. <laughs> Conduct Unbecoming series In 2006 the PI became the subject of a complaint to the Washington News Council for its reporting on the King County Sheriff's Office. The media watchdog group ruled against the PI, agreeing with Sheriff Sue Ra's complaint that the newspaper had unfairly disparaged the Sheriff's Office. The PI declined to participate in the proceedings, and opted instead to give a detailed reply on its website. The PI Globe The PI is known for the 13.5-ton, 30-foot neon globe atop its headquarters on the Elliott Bay waterfront, which features the words, "'It's in the PI'", rotating around the globe and an 18-foot eagle perched atop with wings stretched upwards. The Globe originated from a 1947 Reader's Contest to determine a new symbol for the paper. Out of 350 entrants, the winner was by Jack known as Jack C. Corsor, a University of Washington art student. The Globe was manufactured in 1948 and was placed atop the paper's then new headquarters building at 6th Avenue and Wall Street. When the newspaper moved its headquarters again in 1986, to its current location on the waterfront, the Globe was relocated to the new building. Over the decades since its first installation, the Globe has become a city landmark that, to locals, is as iconic as the Space Needle. A stylized rendering of the Globe appeared on the masthead of the newspaper in its latter years and continues to feature on its website. In April 2012, it was designated a Seattle landmark by the city's Landmarks Preservation Board. Mayor Ed Murray signed a city ordinance that had been passed by the Seattle City Council on December 17, 2015, that designated the Globe as an official city landmark. In March 2012, the Globe was donated to the Museum of History and Industry, which planned to refurbish and relocate it, but as of fall 2018, this had not occurred. Topic: Notable employees. Notable employees of the PI have included the novelists E. B. White, Frank Herbert, Tom Robbins, and Emmett Watson, as well as Andrew Schneider, who won two Pulitzer Prizes for specialized reporting and public service while working at the Pittsburgh Press. Um, 
Topic See also Hutch Award Baseball Award bestowed at PI's annual Sports Star of the Year Banquet <laughs>